Welcome back to the course Introduction to Capella. In this next lesson, we're going to talk about how we define the physical behavior components and how we deploy those physical nodes and behavior components uh, to the physical architecture. This capability is like the previous one, is performed primarily by the system architect with the support from other organization who may get involved defining the key behavior capabilities. Uh, Similar to the last one, it will require a lot of domain knowledge uh, so of basically the problem space and, and what the behaviors are or functions would be, uh, containers of functions would be for that part of the project. Uh, we're going to go through a, a couple different steps here. We're going to start by transitioning the objects um, that are that's already been done in some, some cases. We're going to define the behavior uh, components and their interactions. Then we're going to deploy those to the uh, node components that we previously created. Uh, what is a behavior physical component? Simply, they are a container of physical functions. Uh, they will be used to capture all the logical functions that were transitioned uh, from the logical uh, domain. And now we're going to basically address those and put the and build them and connect them together to basically deliver the capability across the physical physical components. Uh, not every node PC will have a behavior. Uh, you may decide that a behavior of an OPC is obvious enough that by adding the functionality to it offers a little benefit to the actual communications of the design. Uh, you'll see me do that in the example for some things such as receivers and, and transmitters and things like that, uh, where the behavior is pretty much obvious by the name of the product. Uh, a node PC may have more than one behavior. Uh, in some sorts of circumstances, it may be desirable, especially when the behavior uh, may have flexibility of where it may be implemented. Therefore, you might be able to move the behavior easily from one node component to another. Therefore, you might be able to uh, have that as a, uh, as, a, as a grouping of functionality. Um, defining the behavior components, there's a couple different points. A way to do that, one of the easiest, one, one way to do that is through a transition. That is an option. Uh, this, uh, however, we aren't going to use the transitioning as shown here. Uh, it wasn't done previously, and we're not going to do it because of the fact that there's so many different physical components being created from uh, the logical architecture that doing the process just is, just doesn't add a lot of benefit. If you had more of a one-to-one -one map mapping between the logical components and the physical components, then it, it would be possibly uh, save you a little bit of time by doing that transition, and you would just have the, the physical the behavior component would already be created via the transition. Now, doing the steps, there's two different ways to do this. Uh, you could create a separate diagram just for behavior nodes uh, and basically define the behaviors and interactions in that diagram and then deploy them onto a node PZ diagram uh, using the insert tool or uh, the, the, uh, to basically do that deployment. Uh, this is a great option for complex systems, and I'm going to show both. I'm going to show that one. I'm also going to show how you can deploy directly onto the physical node as they're, as they're created. Uh, I will show both approaches because they're both uh, very reasonable to use. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the model and we'll look at the modeling tool. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically kind of review what I've created thus far with the node components. <clears throat> I've done a little bit of cleanup on the diagrams, <clears throat> and I'll walk around the diagram kind of show it. Uh, here we have a uh, uh, PC, which will be used by the operator to basically get the information uh, from the uh, operator, uh, the base station, and basically display essentially all the information related to the different uh, solar chargers that are out there. So I can get the location, all that information. So that we're going to be defining what the behavior is for that. Uh, for that. Uh, next thing we have the operator base station. You can see that it's it's connected to the telemetry box. Of the charger, uh, there'll be many connections to many different uh, boxes. This this little section right here is radio frequency, so we're actually going from one antenna to another antenna in this part of the diagram. Uh, we show a lot of the lines <clears throat> as either RF or uh, EL, for, so electrical or radio frequency. We show here that we have a Wi-Fi connection <clears throat> going over to the P, to the particle cloud. And then likewise, the particle cloud goes to the PC. We have a telemetry box here. The telemetry box has now been modified to include an Arduino 101, which has an IMU. 
that can be used to detect motion from the user. And we have a GPS connection so we can track the boxes. This telemetry box will be in the charger <clears throat> and we'll be able to find out where the, the charger is located. I've also created a diagram that kind of shows the physical power that basically is providing power. Uh, this telemetry box has to be powered by something. It's being powered by the boost module <clears throat> that was existing. <clears throat> the photon particle is getting power from it. And there's also power going to the GPS receiver. I modeled that because that's kind of important. This GPS receiver tends to consume quite a bit of power, so we would, would like to be able to shut that off. So that'll be part of the solution is how to shut that off. Uh, we have the photon particle device here for the operator base station, and we have a PC that's working off the power grid. So that kind of uh, concludes kind of the introduction to this. Uh, now I'm going to go into uh, actually developing the behavior PCs and putting them onto the diagram. Now in this phase, we're going to basically see how we can, first of all, we could basically create the behavior components in a separate diagram. So here I'm going to create a new diagram uh, to hold the behavior components. It's a, again, it's a similar diagram to the other called a PAB, uh, physical architecture diagram. I'm going to drag and split the screen so I can see both, bring back the PAB that I had before. And I'll start the process by creating a, a behavior component. For the Arduino 101. Again, this is going to hold the functionality that's going to be done in this Arduino 101. Likewise, I go and create another behavior component. This is going to be the behavior for the base station. And I'm going to create the component exchanges between the two. These component exchanges will basically hold the chain, the, uh, well, the functional ch exchanges will flow through these component exchanges. And we'll see that in the future, how those get deployed. And then finally, I'm going to create the behavior component for the cloud. So now with the component exchanges done, now I'm going to go ahead and deploy those. So I'm going to show how the behaviors are deployed. I go over to the manage behavior PC deployment and use that and it'll basically give me the list and I can just deploy them that easily to the different objects. And that is how the behaviors are deployed. I'm going to show an example of where you could do the creation and deployment all at once. That's done from this view here. And you say deploy behavior PC, and it creates the object and deploys it at the same time. 
This will be the app for the operator. And I'm going to add the component to it. Now, the component exchanges are also deployed. And in this case, they have to be deployed to either the pathways or to physical links. In this case, we created paths for everything. So we're going to deploy the component exchanges to the paths. Um, but before we get to that, we're basically just uh, completing, <clears throat> adding the operator to the, the diagram and uh, completing this. So this gives us some options. We can actually add functionality to this diagram that's by itself, or we could add the functionality to the object, to the diagram that's here a little more complex. So now I'm gonna finish this by actually opening up the path objects, the pathways, and assigning the component exchanges to the pathway. This is the wrong one. This I looked at this one first. This is where I'm going to assign the functional exchanges. So now I'm going to go to the pathway object, I'm opening it up just by double clicking on it. And I'll say component exchange allocation. And now I'm going to allocate that component exchange. Notice it only finds the component exchanges that could be mapped to it. <clears throat> and you'll see the little green lines being drawn. And I'll show them in a minute here between the operator app component object port in the, uh, the port of the uh, physical object. Next, I'm doing the particle cloud object. Okay. I'm gonna do the same step. See the blue line is created, kind of indicating that uh, the component exchange has been mapped to the pathway. Now, if I didn't have pathways, I would just be going right to the physical connections, and that's totally normal that you would do that. And here I did one, two for the other. So all the component exchanges now are created, the component behavior objects are created, and the connections are all made. And there might be a couple more that have to be made along the way, but we can always go back and revisit creating any additional component exchanges. And that concludes this video.